The book review of Nadeem Aslam's The Blind Man's Garden Introduction The review of Nadeem Aslam's The Blind Man's Garden opens with the plot summary of the novel. Then it discusses research-oriented analysis of major themes, religious fundamentalism, war on terror, us versus them, post-colonial space, hybridity, feminism and Marxism are some dominant themes I am going to discuss. I will not come up with exclusive analysis of the themes, but it will be reliable enough to explore and investigate more about any one of them. Now, the plot summary of the novel. The story of the blind man's garden is set in a small fictitious town of Heer, situated in Punjab. The novel opens with Joe's wish to go to Afghanistan in order to extend his medical service to the wounded, be they Muslims or non-Muslims. His foster brother Mikal wants to join him in his philanthropic duty. Unbeknownst to their father, Rohan, they set out to Afghanistan. However, they are stranded from their holy purpose by a Afghan warlord and are thrown into the heart of war. Joe dies during American soldier raid on Taliban headquarters. Mikal luckily survives. Afterward, Mikal becomes an exchange item among various warlords and then is sold to the American on money. After enduring different forms of torture at the American detention chamber, Mikal escapes from the clutches of American soldiers and makes his way back to here. And here, Nahid, who is married to Joe, but secretly in love with Mikal, waits for him to get married. Tara is a widow who is worried about her daughter Nahid's marriage after Joe's death. Apart from the story of Joe and Mikal, the novel narrates the story of Rohan who denies giving medicine to his apostate wife, Sophia, and now he feels guilty for the wrong done. Furthermore, the story shows that Rohan, along with his wife Sophia, builds a, a school named the Arden Spirit School. His aim is to promote true Islamic teaching so that to revive the glorious past of, this, of Islam. However, Major Kaira takes over Major Kaira takes over the school and transforms it to the breeding ground of jihadi camp. The aim of Kaira is to uproot the evil from the earth. For this reason, he attacks St. Joseph's school and plains many other small-scale explosions across the major cities in Pakistan. However, they are then caught. Mikal comes back and meets Nahid. Now, major themes of novel. The first one is religious fundamentalism. Staking firm to one's religion, thus blinding to other religions, is called religious fundamentalism. Holding strictly on to religion leads to religious extremism. Anyway, this is the first and foremost theme of the blind man's garden. Nadim Aslam conspicuously delves into the representation of causes and effects of religious exploitation within religious fundamentalism. Violating minority rights, oppressive religious laws for women, negation of science and disbelief in medical treatment, Forcing children to join jihad and many more are the features that, comes, that come in the orbit of religious fundamentalism.
you can explore the issue of religious fundamentalism from the perspective of the theory of post-colonialism covering religion. Religious fundamentalism itself is a theory. Your analysis will then be anthropological. However, now I would like to briefly discuss the above mentioned issues in light of religious fundamentalism. The first one is violating minority rights. The first glimpse of religious fundamentalism this novel highlights is that the religious fundamentalist is a religious fanatic who shows intolerance toward other religions. Just because of religious fanaticism, Major Kaira goes for laying siege on St. Joseph's school. In the novel, multiple attacks on Christian schools are evident. Major Kaira intends to bring America down to India, India to Israel. A religious fundamentalist like Major Kaira has zero tolerance toward other religions. He uses this out group hatred as a tool to fulfill his selfish motives. The point is that there is nothing wrong with showing conformity to one's religion, but when it makes you despising other religions, it then becomes a problem. Major Kaira not only despises other religions, he also kills its followers and justifies it as a religious duty. Killing someone just because he or she is a Muslim surely shows religious extremism which is a part of religious fundamentalism. The second one is oppressive religious laws for women. Woman body is the most fertile and vulnerable agent for the religious fanatics through which he executes his oppressive religious ideology. The novel is replete with such incidents where the religious fanatics oppress women by beating, shooting, killing, stabbing and sexually exploiting them. They don't allow people to visit the graveyard. It is the new rule. Teaching science and English literature are threatening subject to Islam for them. Sharif Sharif extend his sexually exploitative tool towards Nahid and back it up with religion. Rohan had a problem with Sophia. Tara also is the pathetic victim of, of oppressive religious laws. The mullah just the mullah just wants to marry a teen years old girl. All these are debatable and researchable elements of religious fundamentalism which is there in the novel. The third one is negation of science and disbelief in medical treatment. A religious fundamentalist doesn't believe in scientific knowledge. Therefore, it is one of the reasons that Major Kaira wants to attack St. Joseph Christian School. What is his point? He believes that the teachers, be they Muslim or non-Muslim, in the school are stuffing the heads of young children with science. Taliban in the novel believe that science is a Western subject. It has nothing to do with true Muslims in Islam. Therefore, they are here to erase it. Those who are learning science and English literature are not just true Muslims according to, the, according to Taliban. Furthermore, they also have disbelief in the medical treatment. Look at the cleric in the novel when Tara visits to make a taviz for Nahid. What he says to her show disbelief. Another incident is that of Rohan. He denies medical treatment to his wife, Sophia. There are more about religious fundamentalism you can easily find in the novel. One thing you should keep in mind, there is nothing wrong with the religion, but 
with its followers who twist who twist it for their own purpose furthermore the fourth one is forcing children to join jihad jihad is a holy war but it has certain criteria what do these religious fundamentalists do they are not positively convincing young men to join jihad but they are forcing young young children to fight against the west another harsh reality attached to religious extremism in the novel is that the same boys then become the source of income for major kaira he gets a lot more money by giving these innocent boys to america as a suspected terrorist additionally he also makes money by kidnapping these young boys and then demands massive ransom from the boys family what is most shocking after spotlighting all this terrible evident is that kara sees it as a holy jihad he justifies it by saying that he is collecting money for the martyred family now using innocent boys is a shield in sending them to the front line of brutal war is nothing but religious fundamentalism kaira is doing so just to feed his ego now the second theme is war on terror war on terror is a dominant theme of the blind man's garden the us led war on terror escalates during the time of 9/11 this is an indispensable part of plot of the novel story all the horrible things happening in the novel is just because of war on terror at the wake of war on terror us started invading muslims countries the novel demonstrates how afghanistan as well as pakistan go through the traumatic situation the innocent killings stereotyping muslims by passing women rights brainwashing young boys to fight against america coupled with their dormant exploitation in other thing increase in the violence or all the results of us led war on terror us versus them dichotomy or you can say polarity it will not be an exaggeration to say that every post colonial english novel offers a greater length of us versus them dichotomy same is happening here however nadim aslam highlights two kinds of us versus them dichotomy one is muslims against non muslims another is the colonizer was versus colonized with these two intra and inter sectarian differences nadim aslam relentlessly declares that us versus them polarity is the major cause of violence it simply says if you are not with us then you are with them and vice versa george w bush statement applies to everyone in the novel there has been a constant battle between the west and east just after 911 incident the setup of the novel is post 911 for american soldiers every muslim is terrorist everyone is guilty in this innocent world no one is innocent they blame all the muslims for the tragedy of twin tower attack and above all they connect terrorism with muslims and islam with terrorism therefore the american soldiers don't spare anyone unhurt those who have beard killing joe and brutally torturing mikal are the examples of this in addition 
soldiers shot considerable amount of a number of uh, considerable number of women in the in the mosque in simple words americans look down upon everything that is related to muslim that is related to muslimness on the other hand we have taliban since america has created a chaos in afghanistan after 9/11 taliban decides to fight against america and american lifestyle however look at the hypocrisy of muslims they would definitely like to go to america if they get free visa for instance for instance a uh, rally in in the street in peshawar has the purpose that america should stop invading muslim countries but a female nurse is well aware of mob mentality she says if somebody could tell the mob that in the next street there are free visa to america this way they they will disperse another example is that of a man who exchanges his old clothes in return of new american one from mikal his name is akbar akbar desires if he could go to america what my point is they are against america but they would not give a second thought if they get free visa to america moreover in the novel taliban have the advertisement saying call for the jihad against america they take the christian school because it is not inside us group for the taliban science in english literature or the subject taliban taliban don't approve approve even those muslims who are not good muslims is them for taliban the clash of us versus them is very prominent in the novel this novel offers an insight to the in group and out group clash a researcher can explore this clash with the help of us versus them theory which is uh, the part of post colonialism now post colonial space nadim aslam's the blind man's garden dramatizes the climate of war on terror inside the geography of afghanistan and pakistan these two territories are considered as post colonial spaces by saying post colonial spaces means it is reduced to war zones center of terrorism in battlegrounds we all are the witnesses of how the land of afghanistan and pakistan have been used as war terrain leading to the increased violence explaining the term in simple words post colonial space means that the land is stereotyped and seen with cliched codification of war and terrorism anyone belong to this land is 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 a terrorist and thus ought to be killed look at the story of the blind man's garden it narrates the story of two brothers mikal and joe who run away to afghanistan and want to help people wounded in the war on terror however the brothers end up as taliban captives and experience the horror trauma and anguish of war joe is killed in a militant assault while mikal eventually escapes from a warlord's prison and faces grave dangers as he navigates the afghan terrain to return home the novel depicts the consequences of incessant warfare ethnic infighting and socio political conflict on both the local population and the landscape warlords are one who have taken advantages of post colonial spaces handing random people over to the american soldiers is suspected terrorist is just because of vulnerability of post colonial space
since this has been a rich source of income for them. On the other hand, we have Taliban dramatizing environmental othering in the novel, having zero tolerance toward others, religion, and hatred of people of non-Muslim is just because of environmental othering. This is what post-colonial space means. Edward Said and Bill Ashcroft have written a lot about post-colonial spaces and environmental othering. Go and explore the novel with it. Now, hybridity. The element of hybridity is evident in Nadeem Aslam's The Blind Man's Garden. There are characters who show dual nature. These characters include, first of all, Rohan. Rohan falls in love with modern independent Sophia, but he then wants her to be dependent on Islamic religion. Therefore, he leaves her on her deathbed without medication. That makes him a reluctant fundamentalist as well. Furthermore, there are other characters who are torn between two conflicting identities. Those people in the really go against America, but still would love to visit America if they just get a visa, a free visa. Akbar, a warlord who fights against America, asks about American visa. Even the student in the Odin Spirit School are not free from the post-colonial element of hybridity. I research and can find more about it and can explore it in light of post-colonialism with the base theory of Homi K. Baba hybridity. Now, feminism. Nadeem Aslam's women are both dependent and independent. Dependent in sense of culture, politics, economics, and religion. Independent in terms of cultural values, religious views, and economic decisions. Focusing first of all on the subjugation of women, Nadeem Aslam relentlessly highlights the oppressive cultural value in a patriarchal society. Women are not allowed to entertain free choices, freedom of decisions, and freedom to get education. She is a pathetic victim to man-made cultural rules. Nahid is forced to marry Joe, even though she has revealed her love with Mikol to her mother. Sharif Sharif hunts for more women for sexual exploitation. Rohan crosses the limit in violating basic human rights. She denies, uh, he denies medical treatment to his wife, Sophia. Sophia is despised for being an apostate. Taliban gave brutal punishment to those women whom sound of bangles is hair. Women are shut down, women are shot down. The mullah just wants to marry 18 years virgin girl. Tara is raped but doesn't get justice. Now the Muslim projects women is independent as well. Nahid still holds on loving Mikal and her mother knows it. Additionally, she wants to be a teacher. Sophia is a modern woman who expresses her autonomous creative thoughts in painting. She prefers to die a post -it. You can explore the novel in light of feminism with the help of Gayatri Spavex. Can the Sebaltron speak? Marxism. Marxism is all about money and material struggle. We see how Taliban and warlords are earning black money. They kidnap innocent boys and then demand huge ransom money from his family. Based on the availability of opportunities, 
they also gave innocent people as the suspected terrorist to American soldier in return of 5,000 American dollars. They do all this by misusing religion as a tool to justify their economic exploitation. What does Karl Marx say? According to Karl Marx, religion is the fume of masses. Here it is. Everything Major Kaira does is just a negative exploitation of religion for political, social and financial purposes. His attack on St. Joseph's school is a political and personal step. His sending of innocent boys to the heart of war zone is for economic stability. His order not to allow women to visit the graveyard is for social dominance. Even the innocent boys join jihad out of financial instability. They want to earn 5,000 American dollars on killing of American soldiers per head. They use religion as an influential ideological tool to satisfy their personal grudges and political vendetta. Representation of Pakistan Nadeem Aslam's The Blind Man Garden is an accurate representation of all the ills of, I mean the representation of downside of Pakistani society. Violence, honor killing, rape, corruption and nepotism are the harsh reality check represented by Nadeem Aslam. This theme is duly projected in the ironic laughter of the American police officer at me call. A military police is on guard. He laughs ironically at me call that says many more things and is pregnant with many hidden messages. His laughter targets many things, many things as me call feels it. Me calls worthlessness in his disastrous love for Nahid, his inability to help Joe, a laughter that flackers with contempt for him and his nation, his laughter aimed at the miserable condition of water system, the shortage of medicines, petrol, the prevalence of unnecessary violence and revenge culture, the network of corruption ranging from butcher to milkman to doctor to policeman to transport inspector, a laughter full of contempt for unholy, holy men, liars, hypocrites, beaters of women and children, repressed and murderer, a contemptuous laughter at those who want independence from British but desperate to immigrate to Western countries to anywhere but Pakistan. However, Mikhail whispers that the American people have played a huge part in ruining his nation. A researcher can explore all these harsh reality check in light of social realism. Symbolic representation of Fakir in the title. The novel is full of symbolic representation. Here I am dealing with just two dominant symbols, Fakir and the title of the book. One would think that the need of Fakir, one would think what the need of Fakir character is in the novel. He appears raped in chains and then dies at the hand of Taliban. This is so symbolic. No one can easily understand it. But don't worry, here, I would like to present my subjective view on this. The Vimasam himself writes about him in the novel that the chains around Fakir's neck are other people's wish, wishes. Fakir prays for them. When Allah accepts his prayers, the specific chain then vanishes. So, what do all this have to do with the novel? Fakir 
in conversation with Rohan points out two types of people Ahle Hawas and Ahle Dil. Ahle Hawas are the people who hurt other and make them uncomfortable in order to be comfortable themselves. Ahle Hawas are greedy, cruel and arrogant. Ahle Dil are good, innocent and moral people who receive those cruelties from Ahle Hawas. Now, just think, if I want you to pray for me, why do I need to overburden you by wrapping chains around your body? This is happening with Fakir. The chain symbolizes greed. Furthermore, in postmodern faction, there is no poetic justice. Therefore, Fakir dies at the hands of Taliban at the end of the novel. So, Fakir is a good character who is placed in contrast with the evil character. Let's discuss the symbolic title of the novel by keeping it very simple. Rohan is uh, an eponymous character of the novel. He is the blind man who that symbolically represents Kaidiasam. He has a beautiful garden that is a symbolic representation for Pakistan. Now, the garden is not a lateral garden, but it is surely the ardent spirit school. Rohan opens the school for social purposes, but Major Kaira turns it into center of jihadi camp from where young boys are sent to the heart of war. Rohan opens it as an epitome of love and peace, but it turns out to be the generator of disorder and violence. Now, language used in the novel. Aslam has used very heavy language. It is full of symbols, metaphors, historical and religious references. There is an omnipresent narrator, a comprehensive description of 9-11 climate and geographical information make the novel worth researchable. A language clearly shows Aswas's them dichotomy. A linguistic researcher can explore it in light of critical discourse analysis. How a political leader uses exclusive and inclusive language. Furthermore, it also gives much more information about the ideology propagated by language. So, take one deck or other CDA theorists to support your argument.